Hi, I'm Stephen Bailey. And I am Zoe Lyons. And we are Fabuloso, the Brighton Hove Digital Pride Festival streaming live from our studio here in Brighton. Over the next three days, we have over 11 hours of entertainment for you. We have exclusive performances and archive footage from some of the biggest artists around. We also have the Queens of Cabaret and so much more. <laughs> we also have interviews with inspiring LGBTQ plus activists, long-standing allies and friends of Bride and Pride, and interviews with some of our local MPs. We Are Fabuloso is streaming across multiple platforms and all the entertainment is free to view. It is free, Stephen, but we still need your money. I mean, not us, we're all right. I've got a fiver and I'm going to split it with you. Thanks, babe. You're welcome. <laughs> but we all are very aware that the coronavirus has well and truly thrown a spanner in the works this year. It has affected all of our lives, our livelihoods and our lifestyles. That's right. And some of the worst affected areas are the local charities and community groups that support people that are struggling, isolated on their own for 365 days a year and that's where you come in. Perhaps you've used the local charity or community group. You know, normally you'd come to Pride and you may spend a few quid on a few drinks, a bit of entertainment. So all we're asking is for you to donate that cash instead to support your local communities now. We are working with the Brighton Rainbow Fund, a local charity that is registered here who support the Brighton and Hove LGBT community. Basically, all the money will go to them and then they will grant it out. Um, we'll show you some videos later on to show you exactly how the money is spent. Donating is really simple. On the screen now, you can see the two codes. To donate £5, simply text 5PRIDE to 70085. Text costs £5 plus one standard rate message. Or to donate £10, text 10PRIDE to 70085. Text cost £10 plus one standard rate message. And if you're feeling very, very generous, you can always text more than once so that the Brighton Rainbow Fund is able to help even more people and even more groups. For all of the ways to donate, head over to our website. That's brighton-pride.org slash donate. The address is on your screen now. Coming up, we have our first visit to the Pride Soapbox where Cathy Caton will be asking our local MPs about what Pride means to them. But first, we're going to head over to the Queer Town stage for a performance from Brighton's own Son of a Drag Queen, its international award-winning drag prince, Alfie Ordinary. I hope you're all having a very fabulous pride. I know I am. I woke up today with this feeling If the sunshine is a meaning, it's telling me nothing that can get in my way. When the rainy days are dying, gotta keep on, keep on trying. All the bees and birds are flying. Oh, gorgeous. Never let go, gotta hold on it. Don't stop to the break dawning. Keep moving, don't stop rocking. Get on. Feels like 
like I should be screaming Trying to get it through to my friend Sometimes I feel that life has no meaning But I know things I'll be right in the end The rainy days are dying Gotta keep on, keep on trying All the bees and birds are flying Oh yeah Never let go, gotta hold on it Now stop to the break, turn it Dying. Gotta keep on, keep on trying. All the bees and birds are flying. Never let go, gotta hold on it. Non stop to the break, turn it. Keep moving, don't stop rocking. Get on up when you're down, baby. Take a good look around. I know it's not much, but it's okay. We'll keep on moving on anyway. Get on up when you're down. I want you to love each other, love yourselves, and stay fabulous. Have a gorgeous pride, everybody! Mwah. Hello, I'm Alan Robbins. As Mayor of the City of Brighton and Hove, I'm proud to support the 2020 Online Pride Festival. Pride is an annual highlight when we celebrate our LGBT plus community and stand up for their hard-fought rights. This year's online programme is spectacular, and it's all free. So please give generously to the Rainbow Fund, which helps so many community groups in our city. Happy Pride, everybody. I'm Cathy Caton. Welcome to the Pride Soapbox. I'm delighted to say that with me is Peter Kyle, MP for Hove. This year marks 30 years of Pride. It should have been a great and glorious year for, for Brighton Pride, but we've gone virtual, we've gone digital. What does Pride mean for you? individually, personally? Well, Pride was the gateway into a community for me. It was nothing short of that. I remember very, very well standing on the sidelines of Brighton Hove Pride, looking in, cheering with everyone else, but actually being quite quiet because inside thinking, should I be there? Should I actually be there? Uh, and that went on for me, that internal dialogue for, for quite a while. Uh, and I remember a, a year later, very meekly walking in the crowd, thinking, oh my God, everyone's staring at me. <laughs> uh, so there is no question that Pride was a very important gateway and a pathway and a journey for me entering into a community, the LGBTQ community. Uh, so that will always have a very, very powerful role for me. I am so proud of the amazing Pride that we have here. I mean, it is a, a celebration of diversity. I think it is also actually, it still keeps its political edge, which I think is still important because although we're celebrating everything that the LGBTQIA community has done, there's still much to do as we know, not only in our country, but around the world. So it keeps that edge, but essentially I think it is just the most inclusive, welcoming, joyous celebration of people being who they are. Those who I think just say it needs to be a protest, um, I think miss the hearts people because people need to feel like there's some fun in it and I think those who just think that it should be a big party kind of on the beach miss the understanding of what the difference is between pride and just any other kind of street fair and it's got to be that balance in between and that's where I think Brighton Pride has worked very hard and done very well at doing that there's always an element of political undercurrent there's all you know kind of it is a community interest company so it's not just about making big bucks it's about putting that money back into the community via the Rainbow Fund and other funds. But at the same time, 
it's also fun. You've got a great acts, you've got a bit of music, you've got a um, you know a street party that is in my constituency that goes on for two and a bit days, really. Always at the very, very heart of Pride has been its political mission to deliver rights, to deliver freedoms, and to give voice to people who have been voiceless or had their voices trampled on, suppressed by the state. We have to remember this. You know, there, our freedoms weren't just ignored, they were actually suppressed by legislation. So the role that, Pr that Pride played in this as a protest movement and something that celebrated in a positive way uh, and gave us the chance, actually, yes, once a year to have a party, you know, all of these things wrapped up into one have been really very important. How can we protect the hard-won rights uh, that the LGBTQ community have in the UK and how can we make sure that we look after our trans and non-binary siblings? I think that's an incredibly good question because I think what it demonstrates really is that you can never be complacent, we can never be complacent about rights that have been won. Um, as you say, rights are, are very rarely given, they are hard won and they need to be hard kept if you like as well. In other words, we need to be absolutely vigilant all the time to make sure that those rights are not being chipped away and and they are being and there was just an example uh, just recently for example with the health secretary you know taking money away from prep uh, which was a really vital uh, element that to keep people safe and, and, and that money is being taken away and you rightly um, identify as well the issues around the trans community uh, and we mustn't allow ourselves to be divided I and what is important in this debate is that we know that trans people are far more likely to um, have attempted suicide, are far more likely to have shortened lives, are far more likely to struggle in discrimination at the workplace, and that is because there are issues that we have not worked out. And some of them are legal issues, some of them are social issues, but all of them are issues that we collectively should take responsibility for. And there is a way forward where everyone's rights and everyone's uh, spaces can be defended, but only if we're willing to engage with the actual real issues that the trans community are reporting and not on these kind of straw man arguments that are really uh, mythical issues or the example of one that really proves nothing. Thanks for that, Cathy. It's great to see how passionate our local politicians are about Pride and the LGBTQ plus community. And we'll be heading back for more from the Pride Soapbox later in the show. Yes, we will. But coming up next, we have a very good friend of ours who's been exiled to the north. But before that, we have a performance from the Nova Twins. Hello, everyone at home. It's good to meet you all. Virtually meet you all. We're Nova Twins. This is Vortex from our album, Who Are The Girls? <laughs> Yeah. Scratch your face like a bass man, like a 
And next up, we are heading up north using the power of technology to hook up with our friend and fellow comedian. It's the brilliant Rosie Jones. <laughs> She's already laughing at our yeah. <laughs> Oh, we're happy to see you, darling. Where are you? I'm in hell. Right, yeah. <laughs> it's better, hell is better furnished than I thought it would be. <laughs> it's lovely. No, I am isolating with my mum and dad right. in York. Okay. Have you had a chance to have people over, Rosie? No. <laughs> I've had uh, seen one friend in four months. Oh, one friend in four months. But that is kind of like a regular sort of stand-up comedian social life anyway, isn't it? That, that is true. But actually, you know me. I'm very sociable. You are very sociable. <laughs> I've had all my gigs. In the middle of night out. Yeah. So for me, <laughs> seeing one friend in four months has been a nightmare. But you've had something to keep you going though, haven't you? Or someone. Who have you been who have we been Googling? Oh my god, <laughs> are you talking about my new girlfriend? Explain yes. to everybody who your new girlfriend um, is. Called Gillian Anderson. Yes. The thing is she doesn't know where to get But she doesn't need but to. Before we get a visual of I bet four months have just flown by. <laughs> Phenomenal. Rosie, I just want to ask you really quickly about your ex-girlfriend, if I may. I don't want to know if she knows about your new relationship, Jodie Comer. Okay. <laughs> it's With complicated. Me and Jodie, it's been very tricky again. <laughs> She doesn't know about our relationship. It was unfortunately very 
one side <laughs> but what happened with me and Jodie was she wasn't where you look yeah. filming killing on the road so I wanted someone more grounded hence killing makes absolute sense <laughs> it really does Listen, darling, I hope, it's, I hope it's not too long before we can see you in the actual flesh and work together again, because you're, you're one of the most entertaining people to watch on stage. You really, really are, and we, we, miss, we miss not seeing you. So, look, look after yourself, and uh, all the very best of luck with your current relationship with Gillian. I'm sure it's... <laughs> Maybe if you dress up as a little purple mouse, she will actually chase you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you thanks, Rosie. I really enjoyed it, oh. and I love you both so big, much. Oh. Big hugs all the way up to you. Thank you See so you much. See you soon. Oh. Bye, Rosie. The amazing Rosie Jones. Yay! <laughs> Rosie, you're the only one we clap for. <laughs> <laughs> Once you catch the beat, feel your feet, start moving. LGBT Community Safety Forum has given me a vision of what the city can be, how welcoming the city can be. And it's given me a desire to drive equality forward for the disabled, for the lonely in our LGBT community. To many of our service users, the LGBT Community Safety Forum means a voice and protection um, and independence. Any section of our community who feels ignored, let down, and are struggling to find hope. We want to give them hope. The Rain Fund to the LGBT Community Safety Forum means empowerment and the opportunity to deliver projects that wouldn't be delivered in the city otherwise. The funding they give us is specific to certain projects. It's not just a handout, a watch. It's targeted at doing accessibility matters or outreach for homeless people. Mind Out is uh, an LGBTQ mental health service run by and for LGBTQ people. Um, and we run a number of different services for anybody that has any concerns about their mental health. I think Mind Out means lots of different things to me. Um, it means that I've been able to get support when I've needed it and when I couldn't find support anywhere else. We run 
open groups which run a bit like a drop-in so people can come whenever they need to or feel like or want to and that's used by lots of people that feel very isolated and sometimes actually don't don't go out unless they're going to come along to this group to meet other people. It's been a really important part of my life um, for the last probably five years. Um, I've met lots of different people on lots of different journeys and um, I've been a part of support groups um, where I've um, sat with people going through similar experiences to myself and we've been able to relate to each other and help me to not feel so alone. The Rainbow Fund have been incredibly supportive of Mind Out and are currently um, funding Out of the Blue, which is our support group for LGBTQ people that have experienced any distress around suicide. An incredibly important group that we run. Hey guys, Brian J. Smith here. Hello, I'm Matty from the 1975. My name's Ryan. I'm Dustin Lance Black. I am Jake Picking, shooting the cover of Attitude magazine. A pepper bottom? Woo! For the LGBTQIA plus community. All lives won't matter until black lives matter. <laughs> oh, I see. Today we're a builder, insurer, investor, landlord, and city regenerator. Tomorrow, who knows? Ours is a story of evolution, a journey we go on together. At Legal in General, your story will be anything but familiar. Try Close Up, the antibacterial gel toothpaste. It's mouthwash infused with microshine crystals and fights bacteria for 12 hours long lasting, fresher breath. Close Up gel toothpaste. Proudly taking pride in pride. Available exclusively at Superdrug. The Sussex Beacon is a care facility for people living with HIV. Rainbow Families is a network of families right across the southeast. Your Action is an organisation providing uh, well-being activities and social events for people living with or affected by HIV. We've got about 450 members who all come together regularly to take part in social and networking events. People need to talk, people need to get things off the chest, some people need to get some support. We opened initially um, as a as a hospice um, and now we care for people and help them to live well with HIV. There are lots of families around uh, the world that uh, identify as LGBT or have families or planning on having families and we all need a support and community that helps and guides one another. Your action means for our service users a safe place where they can access uh, treatments, alternative treatments to improve their well-being. We're one of the only places left in the UK with an inpatient unit and we can provide inpatient care for people living with HIV. Rainbow Fund. The Rainbow Fund. The Rainbow Fund. The Rainbow Fund. They've awarded us funding for our counselling service. They've helped to uh, fund older children's activities. Given us equipment that we seriously needed. We are able to offer what we call the well-being days when people can access uh, alternative therapies and massages and simply network with other people facing the same issues. It's a vital resource for many of the groups. It's enabled us to grow. We can provide counselling service to more service users. The Rainbow Fund has given funding to the Sussex Beacon over many years. Um, lots, of, lots of things that we wouldn't have been able to fund without the support of the Rainbow Fund. It's also enabled us to work together more. We only are able to do that because of the Rainbow Fund. My Generation is a film project that focuses on trans lives and trans experiences. The ethos for My Generation is that it's by trans people, about trans people, for a much wider audience. I started making these films because I didn't see these types of films out there, and I'm so happy to be able to give 
people the opportunity to see themselves reflected. The Rainbow Fund has enabled my generation to be able to create even more films about trans people within our local community here in Brighton. We really want to raise the voices of people that haven't had a chance to, to have a voice. We created films about people from diverse backgrounds and the people that we filmed here in Brighton was a black trans woman who is a writer and a young trans girl who is a makeup artist. My favourite Pride moment would have to be the second year of Trans Pride because this was actually the first year that we had a march. It was a very, very short march, but it meant the world to me and I could tell it meant the world to everyone around me too. You could feel the excitement of people being there, being visible, of something new happening. Everybody deserves the right to feel safe walking in the streets and to feel supported. And I'm just excited that other members of the LGBT community are supporting trans people and to be who they are. Pride is a celebration. Pride is solidarity. Pride is visibility. Pride is a revolution. Pride is important. Welcome back. Hope you managed to grab a drink during the break. Coming up in the next 30 minutes, we chat to choreographer Andrea Walker, who will be telling us what it was like to work with Kylie. We have a performance from Crystal Rasmussen. We also head back to the Pride Soapbox for more LGBTQ plus politics. But first, we have a performance from Joy Crooks. Hello, happy Pride. Love me or leave me and let me be lonely. Inside my head, there's a voice that controls me. I'd rather be somewhere else with anyone but me. Oh, love me or leave me and let me be lonely. Been down so long, now the happy is holy. I'd rather be somewhere else with anyone but me. Seven years strong with my therapy, making mosaics of my memory. Puzzled with doubt, I'm my closest enemy It's like this girl is squatting in my identity She's a raver, little libertine And a bouncer to my dopamine Tried so hard to become a referee To even out the game that's between my mind and me Love me or leave me and let me be lonely Inside my head there's a voice that controls me I'd rather be somewhere else one but me who love me or leave me and let me be lonely been down so long now the happy is holy i'd rather be somewhere Peckham preacher, giving bad advice. She just does the spending and then I pay the price. Trying to be Khalees, but she always tricked me twice. God, I know I could do better. Baby, we're no good together. You were you, I am I. Now you got to go by. Love me or leave me and let me be lonely. Inside my head, there's a voice that controls me. I'd rather be somewhere else with anyone but me. Who love me or leave me and let me be lonely? Been down so long, now the happy is holy. I'd rather be somewhere else with anyone but me. I'd rather be somewhere else with anyone but me.
And that, of course, was a recording of Kylie Minogue from last year's Pride. And joining us now is Andrea Walker, who choreographed the now famously viral videos of Britney Spears and Kylie. Yes. yes. Yeah. Hello, welcome. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah. So how was it to work with Kylie? Everything the gays dream of. She was so sweet. She was so nice. Yeah. yeah. It's fantastic. Well, I'm glad you said that because she's mm -hmm. one of those people that you think, I hope she's as nice as she appears. Yeah. Did she pick up on the dance moves quickly? Oh, yeah. Well, actually, funny story with that. Um, she wasn't supposed to be dancing in the video, but her assistant choreographer came up to me. I was like, Kylie wants to do a few moves. Can you teach her some choreography now? Yeah. Uh, so she did end up, end up actually doing a few steps, but that was completely unplanned. And she's such a pro. She's wow. Amazing. So the Britney video went viral. That went viral the year before, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. The, the thing about that was, and you filmed it all in Brighton, it looked amazing. <laughs> Thank it you. It did look amazing. I've never seen the streets of Brighton look so empty. How did you get it? How did you do that? <laughs> Yeah, it was a good 4 a.m. <laughs> wake-up call for okay. everyone. Uh, so yeah, it was such a beautiful day, uh, which was very lucky. And yeah, we just shot scene after scene, and I think by 7.30 a.m. we were finished. So, so you got the whole lot in, in the day? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so what you do, what are your plans now? I mean, you, you were going to be hopefully doing something with Pride this year. What were you, what were you planning on doing? Yeah, so these Pride videos have become a bit of a thing now. So yeah. we did Britney, Kylie, and I was really hoping to do Pussycat Dolls, oh. uh, which I See. love. Yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, you know, hopefully next year, you know, there's such an amazing singing act as well as a dance act. So myself as a dancer and choreographer, I was like, oh my God, Pussycat Dolls. Yeah, yeah, they uh, can move. Oh my God. They yeah. move. They're so like limber. Well, they've got a lot of leg. <laughs> <laughs> no, they do. They have. I think they've got more leg than torso. Like they've got a good leg to torso ratio, which I think you need to be a dancer. Whereas I've got <laughs> sure. quite a long torso <laughs> and short legs, which makes sense. That's why I'm not a good mover. I've just got a big belly and chippy boobs. <laughs> 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 There's nothing I can do. Sure. The best yeah. thing I can do is the maracas. Yeah, you know? lovely. <laughs> yeah, more than most. Also, what I was wondering is: is there a celebrity you would love to teach to dance, but that's not like a performer or like as in? A singer or dancer already. It's like a Gemma Collins vibe, is what I'm after here. Oh, put on the spot. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, God, I'm very pretty. Well, I'll volunteer. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. What uh, about TV? Pride Zoe next Lyon? year. Yeah. I want to be on the main stage dancing with the Pussycat Dolls. I've said that. Let's make that happen. If that happens. Oh my God. <laughs> and I will wear sequins and everything. And I'll get my legs longer by then. I'll yeah. concentrate on it. It'll be iconic. This is, let's make this happen. It let's will be that. iconic. That's exactly yeah. the right words. Thank you. It's been a delight having you in. Thank you so very much for coming in, Andrea. No, really lovely to meet you. you. Keep on keeping on. We'll see you next year. Cheers. Take Thank care. You guys. Hey everyone, I'm so sorry that I can't be with you for Pride this year, but I hope that everyone is well and safe and in good spirits and the girls and I can't wait to celebrate Pride with you all next year. So get ready, it'll be next year, but we're about to get a pop in like next year, okay? God bless y'all. What can Brighton and Hove do, do you think, to ensure that black lives matter? Well, I think the first thing we need to do is, is each of us need to ask ourselves what we can do. And that means that Brighton and Hove is no different to any other community because ultimately we can't expect just the authorities to solve this problem. There is systemic problems uh, which runs particularly through three sectors in my mind. That's the courts, it's law enforcement and it is in the business community. They are the, th the three sectors that are really have the most amount of institutional racism, and we need to find ways of dealing with the systemic issues and all of those. But we're ultimately only going to solve this problem if we do something ourselves. And that means, however many times we post on social media that we're supportive, which is important, it's an important first step. However many times we protest, which is important, we have to ultimately ask ourselves, each as individuals, what am I doing tomorrow that I am not doing today? Because if we're not answering that question in a positive way, then nothing's going to change. Working towards a, a greener future, do you think that's possible? And how, if so? I think these are just such extraordinary times, aren't they? I mean, they've been the worst of times, absolutely for sure. And my heart goes out to everyone who's been on the front line of this. 
it has also given us a glimpse into what can be the best of us as well. I was reading an amazing book by Rebecca Solnit, a US writer, called A Paradise Built in Hell. And it's all about how actually at times of enormous disaster, and she talks about 9-11 or Hurricane Katrina, she talks about how that can also give us a glimpse of who we can be ourselves. And in that sense, I think we've seen such a strong sense of, of community, of fellow feeling, and of care for nature. And one of the interesting things about these last two months is that it's challenged our sense of what is possible. You know, if you'd asked me six months ago, is it possible that the government would be paying the salaries of nine million people, renationalizing the rail services and finding the magic money tree that was always down the bottom of the garden? I would have said, you know, they'd be daft, this isn't gonna happen, but it has happened. And I think that sense of, of a wider sense of what is possible is what gives me hope when it comes to thinking about how we can use this moment now to gather pace and momentum for the environmental crisis and the climate crisis and to genuinely build back better in the, in the phrase that's being picked up by so many people. Because the government can no longer turn around and say to us that there's no money because they've demonstrated that when the political will is there, money can be found. They can no longer say, don't listen to the experts because they've seen where that leads and it leads to thousands upon thousands of deaths. And I think people have now got a real sense of our own power in a way, that there are things we can do. So my hope is that out of all of the horror of the last few months, we can pull something out of this that does mean that we can create a better world as a result. We're aware of the, the huge um, issues around mental health within mm. Our community, we, know that we have a much higher incidence of, of mental ill health. Lots of things that have been exacerbated by by lockdown, by physical and, and so, mm -hmm. social isolation. As we come out of this, what do you think people in positions of of, of power, like like you and our mm -hmm. our MP structure, can do to help? Well, I want to make sure that we aren't losing spaces because of this. At the very early on, people will remember there was a bit of a worry about some of our bars and hotels um, here in the city. Um, luckily, that's been resolved, but we mustn't allow this to be um, an excuse for things to be the, the things that we have um, and hold dear to us, venues, but also support structures to disappear, because that will make people more lonely and isolated. And I think what this has shown us, this lockdown, is that whilst you can be more connected in many different ways, physical connection for human beings is really important. And so what we need to do is try and create places. And, and this isn't just lockdown. You know, kind of you can think about the increasing use of Grindr and Tinder and Brenda and all those other kind of apps that you have. They are all great to make connections, but they, the problem is that they're not good at creating long-term emotional connections um, beyond the initial. And so how we create spaces where people can do that, I think will be really important going forward. And that's something that I'm keen to make sure we support. They're cleaning the streets in Chechnya, sweeping us up, keeping us hidden, binned within fences. In a land that can only look backwards, we're seeing people like us attacked, redacted, gathered and herded, tortured and murdered, not for committing offences, except for the crimes of being ourselves, exhibiting difference and being defenceless. The streets are still sullied with dog shite, strewn with discarded detritus of the thoughtless, the tourists and those who despise us. Nobody seems to be listening. In this country, hundreds of young men go missing and women thrust love for each other inside of them. In fear of detection, shaming, correction or beating, raping. There's no justice or trust in this system when ordinary lives have no meaning on streets where the poor feast on crusts and are pissing in gutters. Nobody dares make a fuss or even cares enough <laughs> for their streets at least are clean of us. 
And that was the lovely Alice Denny, Brighton's very own Pride Poet Laureate. We'll be hearing more of her work on Sunday's show. Well, I don't know about you, but uh, that last hour has flown by for me. It's gone really quick. Oh, we've got our last guests of the evening before handing over to the very special Pride warm-up party. Um, she grew up as Tom in a northern town surrounded by hard men and probably even harder women, but we know her better as Crystal. Crystal Rasmussen. If you know it, please sing along. Happy Pride, Brighton. Thank you so much. This year's Pride comes at a time when our city's communities are battling the COVID-19 pandemic. Of course, Pride isn't just a march or a party. It's a week-long festival of equalities and an opportunity for our city to show itself at its boisterous, bubbly, bohemian best. We can't march or celebrate this year, but we will again soon. Happy Pride, everyone. Hello, I'm Katie Bourne, the Police and Crime Commissioner for Sussex. Now, every year, Paul and his team work tirelessly to bring together a safe and very enjoyable event. Pride celebrates our LGBT plus community with love and joy, and it's always such a pleasure to be a part of it. Now, although Pride can't go ahead as usual, we are being treated to a spectacular digital festival so we can celebrate 30 years of campaigning and celebration. So let's all get together with love, with joy, inclusivity, and really enjoy a digital pride. 
Well, that was our little warm-up show. Yep, and we'll be back at 5pm tomorrow for the main event when we'll kick off with a virtual parade before heading up to the Pride Festival in Preston Park where we'll take you on a tour of the stages and tents. We have amazing archive footage of some of the world's biggest performers that have taken to the Brighton Pride stage previously. Plus, we've got exclusive new content from the Coco Butter Club. We have a juicy game show called Drag Juice, which I tell you, don't miss that. And we've got some super hot performances from Todrick Hall and Billy Porter. And of course, more politics, activism and campaign videos before we close the night out with the main stage and some of the greatest headline sets that have appeared there over the years, from years and years. Bjorn again, Jess Lynn and Niall Rogers and Chic. But now we have two hours of very special warm-up party tunes as Jean-Paul Gaultier presents Fat Tony. And we'll see you tomorrow at 5pm. And don't forget, we, we are, are Fabuloso! Fabuloso. That project began over 15 years ago as a initially monthly and then weekly support group and has grown to be a drop-in and psychotherapy support group for people under the trans umbrella, anybody who's questioning their gender identity. It was there at a time of huge need for me and immediately I felt safe there. There are individuals who come, who arrive at Clare Project for their, the first time in really desperate straits, dire straits because um, they know that they, there's an issue with gender identity and they're terrified of what it means for them and for their families. It gave me counselling, which I really needed. It gave me friendship and support and it gave me validation. It gave me validation of Alice. We've had grants from the Rainbow Fund uh, for two out of the last three years, which have really enabled us to st spread our wings and do more, be there more, uh, reach out to more people. So it's it's been a lifesaver actually having that money. Lunch Positive is the lunch club and it runs every Friday for people with HIV. And it's a place for people to get a healthy lunch and uh, be part of a supportive community. It's given me a social network uh, of understanding people uh, and that gives you a sense of belonging, I think, which is uh, much needed. But you can discuss very deep problems uh, related to HIV. Brighton Hove's got the second highest prevalence of HIV in England and Wales. And uh, there's a local population, many feel lonely, isolated, many don't eat healthily on a regular basis. You can get real understanding and support and also give it to other people at Lunch Positive. The Rainbow Fund does lots of wonderful things for Lunch Positive. Obviously it funds us, which is essential, which is fantastic. It, it means that we're secure in providing our services year on year. But it's also a, support, a supporter that we can talk to that's local. Uh, we know some of the people involved and we can have an easy dialogue with them to actually talk about our services and what our needs are. And hopefully they can have an easy dialogue with us about how they can help us. Well, it's great food also.
Inequality affects everyone. From jobs, from pay, to... Gender, sexuality, race, religion. It affects all of us. I'm sure if you talk to most people, they will tell you that they've experienced some inequality for one reason or another. I've experienced discrimination because I'm trans. I also have experienced discrimination because I'm queer. People think, oh, you can't do that because you're disabled or because you're gay. We're pathologised lots about our gender and our sexualities. And it happens in all sorts of ways, very overt and sometimes subtle. There's always an assumption, an assumption that you're straight. I used to think it was hard coming out of get as gay, but to come out as HIV, HIV positive is totally different. Mm. The Clare Project is Brighton's longest running trans support service and we've been offering support for the last nearly 30 years. The Clare Project's been seen for a long time as a lifeline for the community. The Rainbow Fund has actually been giving us funding for the last few years and to kind of support our Tuesday drop-in, and which is great because that means we have a consistent ongoing flagship service. This year they gave us a charity development grant which allowed us to build our infrastructure and make sure that our service users were well supported with regards to resources and being intersectionally inclusive, kind of recruit new trustees and develop ourselves as a charity so that we have many more years to come. My first prize, I think I was about 17, it was kind of a pin drop moment that I wasn't standing alone and it was like really like great to kind of have that celebration. Pride to me is not just necessarily one season a year and it's more about visibility and coming together as a community but also making sure that people are widely represented, visibility all round. Rainbow Fund is a, a central hub for community fundraising and we distribute community funds to LGBTQ plus groups in the Brighton, Hove and Sussex area for projects that benefit our communities. We fund uh, lunch clubs for some of our LGBTQ plus elders. We fund all sorts who are specifically dealing with young people. A lot of projects with uh, the trans communities. Well, my first ever Pride was uh, Section 28 March back in the day. So about 100 people and it's grown from that. Nowadays, Pride is a great joy to see new generations with new ideas and new directions. It's honestly not just about partying. It's about the reflection and about things that are going on constantly throughout the year. I go along to RC Plus, which is an outreach singing workshop and brings an enormous amount of joy to those of us who go every month and sing together. My experience of RC Plus was really quite life-changing. I've never sung in a choir before. There were other trans people, there were non-binary people, there were older lesbian and gay people, and I just couldn't believe I'd found it, really. As my voice was changing, RC Plus was a place that I could gain confidence in an environment where other people were doing the same. Without the Rainbow Fund, there would be no RC Plus. Pride means a lot to me personally, as it feels like our day. We get together with the whole of our community and celebrate our lives, our struggles, and our survival. Pride is just as important as it ever was to protest against what's going on in the world for LGBTQ people. Pride is for us to celebrate and to stand up for what we believe in.
to me. 
Yes, my darling, if you want to live in another place, I can understand it. It's going to hurt for a little while, but I can understand it. But before you walk out that door, 